Hello, my name is Zach, and in this lab, I will be dealing with wireless fundamentals. As you can see here in this topology, uh, you have a layer 3 switch that connects directly to the radius server, a WLC, two lightweight access points, and a laptop for administration purposes. Um, the WLC, uh, the radius, and the admin laptop have all been pre-configured statically with an IP address. And uh, as I go further into the lab, I will be using the GUI on the laptop to um, make changes and control the wireless LAN controller. Um, we, I have um, several VLANs. The first VLAN that I have is VLAN 10, which will be for management purposes. For management. The second VLAN that I will create um, is VLAN 22, which is for corporate users. And the final VLAN that I will create is VLAN 23, which is for guest users. Of course, um, these two VLANs here, the corporate and the guest, will need different um, types of security. Um, once we are on the WLC GUI, we can choose what type of security that we will apply for these different categories of users. If we go to the layer 3 switch here and we have a look at um, the current VLANs that are up, as you can see here, majority of the interfaces are belong to um, belong to the default um, VLAN one, okay, with the exception of a couple here that are in the management um, VLAN of 10, okay, and uh, you have two separate VLANs as well, one for the laptop and one for the um, radio server, okay. So first thing is first here, we'll be creating um, a new name for the VLAN 10. Okay, so if I just name it management, and along with um, along with uh, the name management, I will create a interface for it. Um, seeing as this is a layer three switch, I'm able to create a um, an IP address for uh, that is associated with this VLAN. So I'm associating the VLAN with a subnet. Um, as you can see here, I will give it the I will give it the um, a slash twenty four masks and uh, the address of one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot one. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. So on this VLAN here, which I've created an interface for. I will have um, access to manage the WLC, the admin laptop, as well as the APs. All of those are on the um, management uh, VLAN. Okay. Um, now, once um, once my APs are up and running and the WLC is up and running, um, I need to uh, assign IP address to the APs and the best way to do that the way that I will do it in this lab here is by creating a DHCP scope on this multi-layer switch um, so that uh, the APs um, will get uh, an IP address okay so if I just um, do that here now Okay, so I'm going to use the same subnet here, the 192.168.10.0 subnets with a slash mask 24. Okay, so the addresses that I'm looking to exclude 
range from 1 to 100. That, that means the remaining um, IP addresses um, 192.168.10.101 to dot two five four can be used um, in this DHCP range. Okay. So if I um, give this, if I give it a name of let's say management, okay, and uh, as I mentioned before, this is the network that I will be using. Okay. Um, in this particular case here, as you can see, the WLC is in the same um, layer three uh, subnet um, as the APs. So um, the AP will uh, will um, discover the WLC via a um, layer three broadcast of in that same subnet. However. Um, in addition to that, I will also be using the DHCP option 43. Um, though it's not really needed in this particular topology, often when uh, the WLC and the APs are in different um, uh, VLANs um, and different subnets, it's uh, it's used. Okay, so if I just do that, okay. Um, so this is this is the IP that the um, APs will receive from the DHCP regarding the information about the, where the WLC is. As you can see here, the WLC has a has an address of 192.168.10.10.11. Okay, so that's good. So that means uh, our APs will be notified about the. Um, address of the WLC so they can connect to it and form the cap up channel okay um, so that that um, that's done now um, if I just also change the host name quickly okay um, yeah so next thing that I'll be doing is creating a corporate and a and guest VLAN um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I need to create the corporate and guest VLANs um, number 22 and 23. So if we start with VLAN 22, we name it corporate. Okay. And uh, we need to associate um, an uh, interface VLAN with this um, particular um VLAN, corporate VLAN. So if I create the interface VLAN 22 and I assign it IP address, okay, that's good. If I do the same thing now for the um, for the guest VLAN, so this is the VLAN that will be used by our guest and um, users, okay. Okay, so um, now I have um, created that, I can verify it. Yes, now we have created um, the corporate and the guest VLAN, VLANs. And yeah, the next step that we will take is, um, the next step that we will take is to create a trunk link between our WLC and our multi-layer switch because um, multiple VLANs will be traversing um, this particular link here. Um, so we need to make sure that the switch ports um, are trunks so that multiple VLANs can, come, can uh, traverse this link here, okay? Um, unfortunately, Packet Tracer has limited features, so um, we cannot enable lag. Um, between the WLC and the multi-layer switch as 
as we know with the best practice in a production environment, you would have lag between these two to increase bandwidth. But uh, with Packet Tracer, unfortunately, we um, we can only use one port between the WLC and the multi-layer switch. Okay, so if I go on the WLC uh, on the multi-layer switch, sorry, and uh, if I go on the link that connects the um, the link that connects the WLC to the layer three switch, um, what I can do is can make it a trunk link, okay? I've enabled um, encapsulation dot one Q, so um, multiple. Um, VLANs can traverse that link and the last thing that I will be doing is um, is choosing uh, the allowed VLANs across this link so we need access for VLAN 10 which is the management VLAN VLAN 22 which is the corporate VLAN and VLAN 23, which is the guest VLAN. So these are the three VLANs that will be allowed to traverse on the link that connects the WLC and the um, layer three switch. Finally, I will be putting this uh, port that connects to the WLC into um, port fast mode. Essentially what that means is spanning tree will forward it will go immediately into the forwarding state um, skipping uh, spanning tree okay um, here as you can see there's a warning because um, spanning tree um, makes sure um, that there aren't any loops because there is no TTL on the layer 2 uh, in the layer 2 header um, so so essentially when you have multiple switches in the same topology um, spanning trees is, is essential to make sure that uh, looping does not occur um, because that would cause a broadcast storm in the network which will bring the network down so um, however when it comes to uh, the link between uh, a switch and an end host the end host could be a server it could be a pc in this case it's a wrc now moving on to the ports that are connected to the AP, so these ports here, we will be putting them into access mode. Um, that is because the traffic will be um, sent through a CAPWAP tunnel that connects from the LAPs to the WLC, so there's no need to have a trunk link here, so instead we'll be using um, an access port to connect to the a uh, LAPs. And we will also do the same thing we did previously and put that port into um, port fast mode. If I simultaneously bring up both ports, okay, and I um, put them into access mode okay specifically access VLAN 10 which is our management VLAN that we assigned earlier okay and finally what we can do is can enable port fast here as well next thing that we will do is access the WLC via a GUI from the laptop okay usually when the WLC um, has an IP address assigned to it statically as we can see here um, it has an IP address assigned to it of 192.168.10.11 
after that, instead of um, configuring it from the from the CLI on the WLC, it is much more common and it's easier and much more convenient to um, manage the WLC from a GUI. So first thing we need to do is verify connectivity between the, the admin laptop and the WLC. Okay, so if I just ping the WLC. There we go. It's successful. So we can, we have direct connectivity between the two devices. So now, if I go on the web browser and I type in the IP address of the GUI with a HTTPS, I can now access my wireless LAN controller. Okay. So if I put in the password okay here we are this is um, now the WLC GUI that we are accessing from our admin laptop okay so we are accessing this from our admin laptop via HTTPS as we can see here on the summary page both APs have successfully associated with the WLC uh, via the CAPOP tunnel. If I go on the security tab, I can associate this RADIUS server here with the WLC as well. Okay, so if I go on RADIUS for authentication purposes, I can add this server here. Um, so if I go on the server itself, I know that it has a an IP address of 192.168.10.10 okay and it also has a shared sec shared secret um, of Cisco 123 okay so if I go back on my admin laptop I can put all of that information in shared secret is Cisco 123 As we all know, this is the port for radius. Okay, so that should be enough. Okay, let me try the shared secret again. There you go. It's now successfully gone through. Okay. Um, so the next thing that I'll be doing is um, taking advantage of another feature of the um, WLC. Instead of using the switch like we did earlier uh, for DHCP um, for the APs, I will be um, using um, DHCP scope on the WLC itself so that when the corporate and the guest users um, access the network, they will be given an IP address by the WLC itself. That's one of its features, is to be able to uh, give uh, an IP address, okay? So if I go on, I believe if I go on, yes, this is the um, tab I was looking for, exactly, DHCP scope. If I create a new DHCP scope for the corporate and the guest users, okay, so if I do it for the corporate users first, so uh, if you remember back to earlier, um, the corporate users are in VLAN 22 and they have a subnet associated with them of 192.168.22.0 with a slash 24 mask. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll use the, um, 
the latter part of the subnet. Okay, so if I just put all of this relevant information in here. This should be good to go. That's good, all right. And uh, if I do the same thing for the guest, Okay, so the guest has a subnet of 192.168.2.23.0 with a slash 24 subnet mask. Okay, this, this is the gateway that we will use. Um, okay, so now once uh, our users authenticate, they should get. Um, IP address in this range. This is for the guest users and this is for the corporate users. Okay. Um, obviously, in the production environment, you'd probably add other information, including uh, DNS and stuff like that. But in this topology here, uh, there, there is no DNS at all. Um, the next thing that I will do is create um, virtual interfaces. Okay, for each of the guests and the corporate users. So as we can see here, like I mentioned earlier on Packet Tracer, um, the, the lag is not possible. Only one port is actually in use here, as you can see. Only one port is in use, so um, that really limits the bandwidth, but um, obviously in the real life production environment, um, more than one uh, port is used. Uh, so if we create virtual interfaces or logical interfaces for both of the guest and the corporate VLAN, okay, so start with the corporate VLAN ID 22. Port number one, that's the only port available to us now. Okay, so if I give it an IP address in the range of its subnet, and uh, as we said earlier. Um, the DHCP scope we created um, is on the WLC itself. So the WLC has an IP address of .10.11. Okay, so there we go. That should be all good to go. That's fine. I change that. Okay, that's good to go now. So if I create the second logical interface, this time for the guest users. And I associated this with its subnet port one again. So we created earlier, if you remember, we created interface VLAN 23 on the layer 3 switch. So 
can do it, we can associate it with that subnet here. And the DHCP server in this scenario for the users that will connect to the guest VLAN is actually the WLC itself. Okay, so that should be ready to go. All good to go. Okay. So if I just verify that again. Yes, we have now successfully created um, logical interfaces for both the corporate and the guest VLAN. Um, finally, we will actually now create the wireless LAN itself. We're almost there now. So let's create the corporate one first. Okay, this is now where we can edit the features of the corporate wireless LAN. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the corporate and the guest users will have different security settings. Okay, so before we enable it, let's um, let's choose those settings, and let's also associate the the virtual interface we created a minute ago with the wireless LAN. Okay, we do that first, and we can also edit the security here so for the corporate VLAN or the corporate wireless LAN I will be using WPA2 which has AES which is the the latest form of encryption that's available um, at the moment and uh, specifically I will be using the radius server so I will use the 802.1x authentication, okay, in this case. So with 802.1x, um, not only are you um, authenticating the device, but you're authenticating the user as well. So if we, um, if we actually choose the server, so if you remember from earlier, The server has an IP address of 192.168.10.10. Here it is. So we can associate it now with um, this wireless LAN. Um, we'll leave these two for now. So that should be all ready to go. Uh, I will enable it in a minute if, if I just create... Um, the other guest VLAN now. So this wireless LAN will have a different security set setting. Okay. So if I associate it with the logical interface of guest, and then I um, this time, however, though I'm still using the WPA2 policy, which is the most up-to-date um, type of security um, that we have used or we have learnt about in the um, syllabus, in the CCMP syllabus. Um, this time, instead of using 802.1x uh, for the guest users, we will have a um, a pre-shared key. Okay, so this time we're not authenticating on a on a per user basis. This is a per device basis. So in your typical um, uh, Soho environment, um, you you would have one uh, one pass or one pre-shared key that. Um, as long as you know it, any device can connect um, to the network. 
okay so we don't need to associate any radio server with this because it will be using a pre-shared key okay so if I if I create the pre-shared key now it should be ready to go so as long as you have this pre-shared key you can connect to the to this wireless LAN of guest okay so now I will actually enable both of um, these wireless LANs. So I've enabled the guest. So it should be now available on uh, on the APs to connect to. If I enable this one as well. So the corporate um, wireless LAN is using the radio server and the guest WLAN is using a pre-shared key. Okay, so what I can do now is I can put it to the test. Okay. Um, so if I go on this laptop here, as you can see, it's currently... Um, There is no DHCP available to it because it has not connected to um, the, um, the wireless LAN yet. Um, however, once we connect to the wireless LAN, the DHCP scope that we created should give it an IP address. But for now, DHCP has failed. So if we go on um, this specific part, the wireless part, um, of its interface okay it's wireless interface and we go for the corporate SSID or service service set identifier which is basically the name of the VLAN, uh, wireless LAN that you're looking to connect to it's using WPA2 um, and the the user ID and the password have already been set okay so the username and password I got from here okay so admin Cisco123 um, so now it should be able to connect to the AP if you just give it a minute while we're waiting I will just quickly do the same thing on the guest laptop okay so the SSID I'm looking for here is guest and this time we are still using uh, WPA2 but however this time is with a pre-shared key okay so should be good to go Yes, there you go. So now both of the laptops have connected. This one is connected to the guest um, wireless LAN, and this is connected to the corporate wireless LAN. Notice for the corporate laptop, I had to put in a username and a password um, because it's using 802.1x with this radio server. However, for the guest, all I had to put in was a pre-shared key because it is using WPA2 PSK, also known as WPA2 Personal. And corporate is using WPA2 Enterprise. So, um, because of the limitations of Packet Tracer, DHCP scope gave us a um, an IP address in the in, a, in in the wrong subnet. It should have given us uh, in the 192.168.23. Uh, subnet but that's uh, down to the packet tracer limitations uh, I hope you've learned something from my lab today here and uh, please um, do not hesitate to leave any comments or feedback and let me know what you thought of it thank you